Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Disney Cruise Line Show. I'm your host, Pete Werner, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, joined this week at the table by my good friends, Denny Sunderly. Hi there. Jackie Gailey. Hi, everyone. The beautiful Miss Kylie Williams. Hi. The man she married, which is unexplainable to me, is Craig Williams. <laughs> Ahoy, hoy. Back in the production of Associate Producers Fiasco. Ahoy. Oh, that's Craig's. No, Sorry. yeah, you can't take that. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to think of a sailor. I was just trying to think of a sailor thing to say, and it came out. Anchors away? Anchors away. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. Really going to slap somebody before the show is right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, on his last day? Yeah. On his last day with us, Mr. Steve Porter. Hello. Um, so, um, earlier this year, we had done... A Disney Cruise Line show. It was kind of a test balloon. Wanted to see how it would go. We did it um, when uh, the March release yep. came out mm -hmm. uh, for cruises. And it went. It, people seemed to respond to it really well. And all year I've been saying, I really need to do this cruise show. Months in the making. Months in the making. Well, months in the talking. Yeah. <laughs> months in the talking. Um, but I decided that we would officially launch it. On this, the show will become a regular part of uh, of our, our lineup beginning in January. Uh, so you will get regular shows every week, every uh, Disney Cruise Line shows every week, starting in January. But I wanted to officially kick it off. We uh, we kicked off moving to our, uh, the moving to Orlando show yep. last year. Um, so I think every one of these that we do, we should kick off a new. A new show. That makes it more exciting. It is yeah. fun. Yeah. Definitely. It is fun. So um, for this one, I originally planned on this show being five things first-time cruisers should know about Disney Cruise Line. Once we sat and started talking about what we wanted to, uh, what we wanted to discuss, I realized I should not put a number <laughs> in front of this. <laughs> So we're just going to call this Things First Time Cruisers Should Know, because there was a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of stuff. And I do want to make sure that um, I mentioned at the very top um, to go to disboards.com and check out the Disney Cruise Line forums. Um, I, I don't think there is a location anywhere on the Internet with the depth and knowledge of uh, information on DCL. Yeah. that you will find on our discussion boards. Um, and I will also give a plug uh, to Dreams Unlimited Travel. I'm an owner in Dreams Unlimited Travel, so I just want to be upfront about that. But um, certainly book your cruise through Dreams. You get a great shipboard credit um, up to, I think it's like $1,000 or $1,500. Mm -hmm. or I pay no attention anymore, but... A thousand. <laughs> is it up to a thousand? Mm -hmm. Up to a thousand dollar shipboard credit. Um, you get a lovely... A gift basket. A lovely gift it's basket fantastic. before you sail, mailed to your home. It's, it's um, wonderful. We have a uh, we have a welcome center located in Cape Canaveral, just a mile from the port, where you could stop in before your cruise and say hello, grab some coffee, use the Wi-Fi, talk with Teresa, or whoever well, else happens to be out there. <laughs> Teresa with an asterisk, because the last three times I've gone to the welcome center, she has not been there. So, Oh, really? She's avoiding you. Yeah. Mm. I mean, okay, Don't the last time story. she was in Illinois with her family, so I'll give her a pass on that, but <laughs> I, I will always bring it back to the one day when she flat out closed the welcome center early and didn't tell anyone, <laughs> just bailed. Whoops. And Rhino and I were all ready to visit her. And oh. Oh. <laughs> Doors locked, <laughs> lights shut off. No Teresa. Nice wow. of you to tell her boss about this. show. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to appreciate that when she comes in here in a few minutes. Oh, uh -huh. it's on. <laughs> it's on. It's on. Wow. So anyway, but, you know, barring that, you can head out to the Welcome Center as well. So, All right. So let's talk about some things that uh, everyone should know, all first-timers should know about DCL. Um I think the first thing I want to drive home, book early. Mm -hmm. uh, DCL, like most, uh, most cruise lines, most hospitality uh, industries, work on a tiered system. So when cruises are released roughly about 18 months in advance, it's when they're released for booking, 
Um, and when they are, that's the lowest price you're going to get. As the ship fills, the price goes up. So if you can book as soon as they are released, you stand a much better chance of getting the best price. And when we're talking about Disney Cruise Line, that matters. Because if you do any kind of price comparison, you will see Disney Cruise Line is not inexpensive. But there are reasons for that. Absolutely. Believe me, there are reasons for that. Um, and we will get into that in other shows and uh, as we go on. But booking early is the number one thing I have to drive home for, yes. for newcomers. Um, another one, probably the biggest misconception out there, is Disney Cruise Line is for kids. Now, they are certainly, they certainly redefined cruising for families. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, uh, they, when, when, when Disney came on the scene, services for kids on cruises were not, nothing to speak about. Disney changed that. But, but, I am, I do not have children. I have sailed on, I don't know, 33, 34 Disney cruises. And, and it's not that I don't like kids. I just don't think yours are as cute as you do. Um, so, um, so I don't necessarily want to be around them. Um, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a whole section area of the ship dedicated to adults. It's 18 and over. That is where some of my favorite places are, namely the Cove Cafe, which is their, their coffee house, oh, and uh, Senses Spa, which just defies reason how good that spa is. So, oh, yeah, you first, Steve. Oh, I was just going to say that not only are these, the uh, 18 and over sections great, but I think what makes it's special on Disney Cruise Line is because it's targeted towards families. A lot of adults can't just, yes, unless their kids are in the kids club, they could take advantage of the adult section. But a lot of families want a family or want a vacation together. So they're in the, the family pools. But that leaves those adult sections more so than any other cruise. I've been on Princess and Royal. And those adult areas are always it's hard to find a chair. It's kind of like blocked up with adults because they're targeted that way. Where on Disney Cruise Line, I've been in the pool, that pool before, when there's been like one other family. Yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's That's targeted in a way where there's just less adult, adult solo travel or adult only travel parties. Um, so the, you can really take advantage of having sometimes whole sections of the ship to yourself in those areas. Yeah. If you're looking for. <clears throat> excuse me, heavy nightlife, mm-hmm. you're not going to find yeah. it. I'm just going to, I'm not going to be And what's sad is that, especially when you get on the Dream and the Fantasy, the newer ships, uh, their clubs, they have some amazing clubs, yeah. but it's like a ghost town. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, to put that in perspective, the last two dudes on a cruise we did, Corey and I tried out the silent DJ party and where you get the headphones and everyone's listening to music and you see the colors changing as they change stations and dancing, having a good time. There was a decent amount of people on the magic when we did that. And it was the uh, match your mate on this past cruise that Kylie and I were on. And everyone always comes out for those shows, like the, the 10 o'clock adult show, whatever it is. Everyone bombards that because it's usually hilarious and a little risque, but but still a good time. And the DJ party was happening right after. And I was telling her, like, oh, it was so much fun when Corey and I just sat and watched people dancing. And what? There was maybe like 10 people, probably 15 people. max. It, and I was like, it was oh, wow. this is fun. Oh, <laughs> it was just gosh. no one was okay. into it. Um, mm. I think it was Rhino and I. I think no, it was the San Juan sailing that we did back in January on the Wonder, and we were sitting in the pub, mm-hmm. and it was about eleven o'clock at night, and one of the TVs in the pub was like a closed circuit of a closed circuit video of the. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, uh, the, the dance club that's right across from it. 
Um, I haven't been under the wonder since 2013, so. And there was about four or five people in this club. Two of them were so drunk they could barely stand. (laughs) And we're sitting here watching this. We were just on the floor laughing. It was so funny. But it is, you know, these are not party cruises. If you want party cruises, Carnival and NCL are where you want to go. You really, or even Royal, uh, more than more than Disney. But Disney is not not a party cruise. Yeah, it, but there is, like Steve mentioned, though the nice part about it is at the end of the night, you can go down to to whatever the pub is on the ship and sit there and have a beer, and you have a seat. You have a guaranteed seat, which is not the case on some of the Royal Caribbean cruises we've done. It's standing room only everywhere, and I like that. You can go into the champagne bar, have one glass of champagne, and then pick up your kids from the kids' clubs and go to bed. There's, It's it's not a party, but it's still relaxing adults. Oh, no question. And so. you also, I think because of it, get a higher level of service from the cast members because they're not bombarded with – you know, hundreds of guests filling into these pubs and in in different areas where it's 18 and over, they can really make sure that, you know, I've had full conversations at the bar before with the cast member of, you know, what's ship life like? And, you know, you get to meet the cast member where, you know, you can't really do that on Royal or some of the other ships because they're just too busy. And one thing Pete taught me very early on, pretty much the first cruise, you find a spot that you want to go to, very first time and you commit to that spot you leave that bartender a nice generous tip and they will wait on you hand and foot right okay but those were my tips that was, those were the tips of an alcoholic that was back in the day <laughs> okay those were the tips of an alcoholic that wanted to make sure he got his drink strong and he got his drinks fast um so still good advice good and i nice take that to heart ni- ni- nice to know that's what you remember not on the level that you tip <laughs> but Still, it's you do that, you will make the best friends of your life on in the uh, in the district or whatever adult section you're on on those ships. And, and I did that. I did that everywhere I traveled when I was drinking. Um, mm-hmm. For those who don't know, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Um, but uh, I, uh, yeah, when I was drinking, that was where because I travel a lot. I would find what the bar was going to be that I was going to spend my time at, and I would go in and I would you know buy a couple of drinks and I would leave that bartender a crazy ass tip. And for the rest of the week, every time I don't care how busy that bar was, as soon, as soon as I walked in, my drink was poured and up on the bar. Wow. It's a great feeling walking in and hearing, "Mr. Craig, would you like another six eight seven? Yes, I would. Yeah. Well, you. you know what's what's <laughs> you, you, so you know like when like you know you're an alcoholic. When ten years later, you walk up and you're sober and you walk up to a bar. And they start pouring the drink. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because they, reme- they remember you. Wow. Um, like, Tam, okay. <laughs> I spent way too much. I now spend that money and time in the spot. Um, yeah, I wanted so. to ask before we moved on too far, uh, because I've never been on a cruise. And I think I'll mention it because I don't know if people know that. I've not been on a leisure cruise. Yeah, I've not been on a leisure cruise. Just Spent ju- four years in the Navy. Just, just the military kind. But uh, how do the spas compare to what we have here in the world? Um... Oh, um, I don't think I've, I don't think I've found an e- their equal uh, an equal in Orlando to what is available on the ships. Um, while the services may be the similar or the same, there is just something about doing it on a cruise, on a Disney cruise in particular. Um, now understand. Um, all of the spas on every single ship I have ever been on, whether it was Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, Disney, um, were all run by Steiner. Uh, that's a company out of London. Um, I don't want to go too far into this because it's not really part of our discussion, but they're run by Steiner. Um, Steiner runs an amazing spa. They really do. They really, really do. So these are third. These are third-party spas. Um, and they're really well run, though. They're very, very well run. But now I, um, I'm telling you, I, spa treatment on a ship versus a spa treatment at a hotel, it's just, there's no comparison. Oh, I also oh want to quickly say if, you know, maybe you don't have it in the budget to do the full spa treatment, um, 
there's also the rainforest room, which is in the spa area, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Twenty nine dollars. Twenty nine dollars for a day pass. Fairly affordable, and it's amazing. You you go in there, it's like all these different showers. You're wearing your bathing suit, and you you know there's a cold shower, a warm shower. There's different saunas. There's aromatherapy showers. There's uh, steam rooms of different intensities. There's these um, like relaxing lounge stone chairs. They, right. They're 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 heated tile uh, lounges. Um, to jacuzzi. But, yeah, we're getting way, way off topic. Yeah, Spot sorry. Jet. We really, that's a, that's a, a topic ready, for I'm another to show. All right, Danny, one of the things that you, uh, you pointed out as something people need to know, fly or drive the day before. Yeah, and so, and, and I get it because that um, increases the expense of your vacation if you do so. Um, so when we lived in Maryland, um, when we started going, we've been on a total of, 10 seven day cruises and um, and they're all dcl and um we when we were starting out we were coming in the day flying in the day of and the problem with that is especially when we would go we would go at christmas time or thanksgiving time and so you can have inclement weather that can hold up your flight and if it holds up your flight they're not holding the boat for you they're gonna wave with their mickey hands ship and off it goes and that can be a problem for you. So we just decided we got a Hilton Honors credit card. So we got Hilton Honors points and we found a Hampton Inn off of TG Lee Boulevard. And we would fly in the night before we would have, we would use our credits um, that we had accumulated over the year. And um, we would stay the night. We'd take the, air, the TG Lee, the Hampton Inn um, shuttle from the airport to the hotel, eat, sleep, get back on that shuttle, back to the airport, get on the transportation, the transfer from the airport out to Port Canaveral. And it was fantastic. It took a lot of stress off because there's so much stress involved with a vacation anyhow. And that was just something that kind of ticked off a box for us that we didn't have to stress about it anymore. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, you definitely do not want to mess around no. with embarkation day. Um, no. You want to be in the day before. If you're traveling from out of state, you want to be in the day before. You've spent um, thousands of dollars on this amazing vacation, and it could all go up in smoke if you've got a freak snowstorm or they have a strike, a labor strike, and they have to ground planes. You're, or, or something happens to your car as you drive down to Florida. It, anything could happen, so it, it helps to take some worry off of it. And, well, I was going to say, too, and you don't have to think about it in a way of, like, what am I going to do? Obviously, it's Orlando. There's stuff right. to do. But even once you get to the terminal, unlike any other cruise line, the party starts as soon as you get through security and you're at the terminal. You can meet characters. If it's during the holidays, they have special well, decor. The best. But, but let's, the best. Also, let's also talk about that. Let's talk about Embarkation Day. Yeah. Because you, I mean, every single person in this room that has ever done a Disney cruise, you say embarkation day. Oh. Okay, because it is, you know, especially, you know, I think the magic holds, magic and wonder hold 2,700 passengers, and the dream and the fantasy hold something around 4,000. <laughs> um, and all of them. <laughs> All of them seem to converge at roughly the same time. Yes. Now, unless you are a Platinum Castaway Club, which is Disney Cruise Line's loyalty program, which means you've done uh, 10 cruises or more, um, or a concierge guest, you will be assigned a time for uh, to show up at the yeah. port. You are told... To show up at one o'clock or show up at eleven o'clock or the er, yeah the earlier you do your online check-in that's when you get to choose your port arrival time so the earlier that you get to do that check-in the better because then you have more choices available to you um, as to because they they don't want all four and change thousand people descending on the port at the same time so that that can be big and every cruise is different uh, this past one that Kylie and I were on it was for media so we. They needed us on the ship as soon as it was ready to go, so we didn't have to worry about that. But when I checked in, I still got my time. By the time we actually got to the port, checked in and everything, our time that I, I booked was like 2.30, but it was maybe 11.30, 12 o'clock, and they had already called our number that we could have gotten on the ship. Mm. So just because you have that time, 
don't not necessarily show up early because if not a lot of people are showing up, then you could get on the ship a lot earlier, and that's what you want. You want on that ship. For f- first time cruise, I remember our first time um, cruising. We got on the ship. We've got the t- kids who are younger at the time, and um, my in laws who had sailed a lot on different cruise lines. But I remember standing in the buffet at, at the time on the Magic. It was called Top Siders. Um, so this is back in the day, and I remember standing there at the buffet with all the people, and the kids are crying, and moms are trying to get chicken nuggets, and it was just this scene. And I remember. I remember standing there going, I don't know that I'm okay with this. I, I, is this the way that the whole cruise is yeah. going to go? Yeah. So take a deep breath. First time cruiser, take a deep breath on embarkation day. The whole cruise isn't like that. No. Everybody's traveled. Everybody's hungry. And this is new for a lot of people. The cruise so. doesn't The cruise doesn't start until you're done with your mustard Yes. Cup. Okay, um, and you know the muster drills are required by uh, the Coast Guard for all ships sailing out of the United States, um, and that usually happens around the four o'clock time frame uh, on embarkation day, where you have to go to your lifeboat, uh, your lifeboat assembly station, um, where you will go in the event something God forbid happens, um, and uh, that usually happens around four o'clock, less or about ten or fifteen minutes, and then you're done. Your work is done, and now you can enjoy the cruise. So embarkation day really starts when you get to the port, and it ends when that muster drill is over. And, um, and that's when you can relax and start to enjoy yes. yourself. And you don't have to show up at muster until, like, if it starts at 4. They'll start playing announcements about 30 minutes early. You don't have to show up until right at that time. But the earlier you get there, the closer you will be to the you can be to the exit. And the first thing that happens after muster is the sail away party, which, especially for families, that's a you have to be there for that. Uh, If you are the last person at muster, you are going to be so far away that by the time you get to the elevators and stairwells, you're lucky. Yeah, that's the other thing to keep in mind with a muster drill is that uh, those usually take place on decks three and four Mm -hmm. um, where the lifeboats are, basically. Um, And... uh, when you're done, you want to go up to deck nine or eleven. Nine or eleven, depending on what ship yep. you're on, and uh, you can take the elevator, but you're going to be there for a long, wait, long so time. Wait. You'll be at Nassau, so yes. it's yes. one of the only times yeah. I will take the stairs. And needless to say, by the time I get up that six or seven flights of stairs, I need a rest. <laughs> You've had your um, exercise for it's the It's kind of strange that they don't, the sail away party doesn't, they, why don't they give it an extra 15 minutes? I don't understand that. I don't know either. Um, the other thing is to download the Disney Cruise Line app in advance. Have that on your phone. That app has become more and more useful uh, in the time since it was originally launched, mm-hmm. um, it will allow you to chat, uh, basically text, back and forth with other members of your party yeah. uh, without incurring any uh, fees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, your personal navigator, you want to show you, hand yeah. me one of them? So, absolutely. Um, your personal navigator that used to be printed like this, which Disney Cruise Line will try and tell you they stopped doing it for conservation reasons. That's complete bull. Because you are going to have enough paper left on your bed every night in shopping guides and this and that and the other thing. They did it to save money. But it's now all on their app. So if you want to know what's going on around the ship, you're really going to need the app. Yeah, And they'll give you, um, if you get to port and you haven't downloaded the app yet, they're going to give you this little piece of paper and they're going to step by step exactly how to download the app but you do want to do that before you get on the ship and like Pete said they are not printing the personal navigators every night like they used to and leaving them on your bed you've got to go to guest relations down in the lobby and ask for it and and Craig you you pointed out something earlier that maybe it was a little it wasn't out and easy to be seen they had them in two racks that you could find them but like one of the things I was I wanted the next days because I yes. wanted to start planning ahead and I still like the paper but I will say the the benefit of the the navigator app is that it it does allow you to like heart everything that you want to do so then it will notify you like 15 minutes ahead of time 
that, hey, this event's coming up, so yeah. you know where you need to be. What I also but, uh, what I also like though is that when you make spa appointments, when you make dining reservations and things like that, any of those reservations that you make, the app yep. will notify you that you have yeah. this coming up in the next yeah. fifteen minutes. I can't tell you how many spa treatments that saved me <laughs> um, from That's missing. Yeah. Because it's very easy once you get on the ship, you kinda lose track of time and days and, and everything and Steve, life. Well, you feel like you gifted Kylie a, a spa appointment at one point in time because you missed it. That was on the Viking. That was on the Viking. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, well and also just make sure it's you have it and it's downloaded because I've gotten to the point where I'm like the ship is starting to move away and I'm like, oh no, I forgot to actually have it on my phone and I'm like fortunately watching it download quick enough because if the ship had gotten too far away, I probably would have gotten international fees or whatever to have the data plan or whatever, or not even had reception. The, sorry, the last thing I want to go off on that is, w one thing is though, obviously with that, you have to keep your phone on you at all times, but I think Disney has kind of reconciled that that's people's main camera. And obviously you're on a cruise, you want, you want to have your camera for the memories. So yeah, you're not, you're, you're keeping your phone with you, but if you only use it for the navigator, you can still disconnect, and that's part of what's wonderful about cruises is, is exactly. disconnecting. Uh, and okay, maybe that's uh, wonderful for you. That is oh, not a source of. I mean, wonderful. that is not a source of relaxation for me. That is a source of stress. <laughs> okay. I have never been able to disconnect. One day, I know I will, but not yet. Uh, the other thing about the navigator is, by the time this is, while we're doing this for the marathon, it's still a question mark. But by the time this is fully released. Uh, the the latest update should be in place where uh, with the last app update they announced it in the app that you'd be able to do your onboard rebooking as well as uh, mobile order at the Cove Cafe and that's hopefully huge. when this is <laughs> well this should be in place. Yeah. The onboard rebooking because that's another one of our make sure you do yes. uh, on rebook on board or at least get a placeholder cruise because there's uh, the discounts and specials and shipboard credits that they give are phenomenal are absolutely phenomenal. Um, but um, you have to make an appointment to go to the rebooking desk, or if you just show up, you gotta pray yeah, that there's not 27 people in front of you. It really, yes, there will be. unless you are in concierge, then the concierge can handle it for you. Outside of that, outside of that, this is a huge ad. Yeah. But it, uh, now, I know that they were having problems with it. Yeah, um, I. It my, was, my understanding was, at least to, uh, as of today, I think on one of the ships, it was going to be active. Yeah, it was. I mean, the update came right as we were on the day that we were leaving on our cruise. And so we were hoping that it would actually mm -hmm. it would have been live that day. But I, when I was talking to the reps in like the they had some of the DCL people there and I was like, well, when's this going to be in place? You could tell they hadn't even heard about it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they didn't even know it yeah. was a thing. Um, so, because oh I almost went up to Cove Cafe and was like, so are you happy with this mobile order thing? And then once they said they didn't know about it, I'm like, mm. There's, they didn't tell them at all. They didn't tell them anything. Happening. There was no memo. All right. If, on our, I just want to say, if, if you want a paper navigator for the next day, at least our last sailing in May on the Fantasy, they did have them available later in the evening, like later in the yeah, evening like once nine. the show's, the, di the dining's done for the evening. You can stop by and pick that up. All right. Um, one of the other things you want to make sure you do early is make your reservations for specialty restaurants. If you are on the Magic or the Wonder, that will be Palo. If you're on the Dream of the Fantasy, that is Palo or Remy. Um, and uh, along with shore excursions, because some of the shore excursions are extremely popular and sell out very, very quickly. Now, there is a, uh, there is a pecking order to how, or, how, 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 how soon before your cruise you're able to do that. If you are a first time uh, first time cruiser, you can book those reservations 75 days in advance of the start of your cruise. Uh, if you are Silver Castaway Club, which I believe you are after your second sailing, mm -hmm. um, you can book 90 days prior. If you are Gold, which is five sailings, uh, 105 days. Platinum and concierge guests are 120 days. So yeah. Well, I just want to also add if you don't get them, if you don't get I'm going to oh, okay. I'm going to get to them. I'm going to get to it. Let okay, me Okay, okay. Let me interrupt you. 
<laughs> um, so doing that online is extremely important. Trying to get those uh, uh, spa appointments aren't too bad, uh, but you sh should do those as early as possible as well because I've had it happen where there was a spa treatment I really wanted and I wasn't able to get it online. But as Steve was getting ready to say, don't lose hope if you don't get it because they hold back a certain number of reservations for people that did not get them online. I think I heard it was about 70% of the reservations are booked online. The other 30% are held back. But, this is important, as soon as you get on the ship, mm -hmm. do not go to Cabanas to eat lunch. Yeah. Do not go anywhere to do anything. Find out where they are doing the bookings for Palo, Palo Brunch, Remy. Go straight there. And go straight, straight there. Straight there. That's what we did because <laughs> that happened to us. And that was one of the tips I read on our board. Run, don't walk. Yeah. yeah. And you can, if you get, like you were saying, you can get on a waiting list. It happened for us for Palo Brunch. And we had um, we had the choice. It was 9.20 in the mm, No, it was later than that. And so the first choice was <coughs> in 20 minutes or the second choice was in an hour. And we said, no, 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 we'll be there. My husband's in the shower. And I'm going, come on, come on. We were so excited. Well, it's worth every let's just, minute of being on that waiting let's, list. Let's differentiate what these things are. Yeah. Um, Palo is a northern Italian cuisine <laughs> restaurant, adults only, 18 and older. Um, there is a dress code. Do not show up in shorts. Do not show up in a t-shirt. Do not show up with flip-flops, no which is why Craig has never eaten there. Um, <laughs> he has. We ate there six times on my first cruise. <laughs> That's Whoa. only because of who you are with. Um, but, um, and that is done every night. That the, They do dinner every night of the cruise. On sea days, they do a Palo brunch. And I will say this specifically for the Wonder and the Magic. That brunch is far better than the brunch on the dream and the fantasy. Now, I know there are people who are going to throw things at me, but I have done both multiple times on every one of those ships, and I am sorry, but hands down, hands down for me, the brunch on the one, the, the Palo brunch on the Wonder and the Magic is still the best. But because it's only on sea days, it's extremely limited, extremely limited. So very, very important that you get that. If you get nothing else at Palo, get that. Um... Dinner's a little bit easier because, again, that's done every night. Remy is very difficult. Now, Remy is um, really uh, w the equivalent of a Michelin star French restaurant. Um, this is not dinner. This is a dining experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. Seven course. This is a experience. seven course meal. Um, French inspired. Um, that will take hours. So they're not turning over tables here. They have a certain number of reservations they can have in a night because they're not going to rush you through. My last time at Remy, I believe we were there almost four hours. Oh, um, and it's not hard to do. <laughs> it's not hard to do um, because they're, they're, they're pacing everything out. And, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Now, these are upcharge restaurants. I believe it's $40, 40 for, for Palo. Palo and I think 110 for... Is it 100 I didn't think it was that high. Yeah, something like that. No, no. For Remy, is. yeah. For, for Remy? Mm-hmm. Worth it. Because we looked at it. And I haven't done it yet, so... Okay, if I'm going to tell you if you do it, you'll be like, that's the best $110 I ever spent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought... Um, I, I didn't think it was that high, but... often think of food as art, but I think Remy, the food there is so good that it's... It blew me away. There's... The, the uh, server asked me you know, what my food preferences are and told me exactly what I would want on the menu and he was 100% right because he's a professional and it was insane. I was like, it, it's a type of place that will blow your mind. I, I, I love to tell this story though. Um, my ex and I were at, had dinner in Remy one night and we were seated next near a, another couple. Uh, we weren't like right on top of them but I could... You know, you can't help but overhear some things. And um, guy gets his bill. And he's looking at it. And his wife had gotten up, to, I guess, to go to the restroom. And he calls the server over, and he's pointing to something on the bill, and he's got this concerned look on his face. 
and the server is saying something, and then he's saying something, and then the manager comes over. And I couldn't hear what they were saying until they left, and the wife came back and sat down, and I heard him say, we're screwed. And she looked at him and said, why? And he said, that bottle of wine we had was $3,000. What? Oh, my word. Now, what they, because the next day I was talking to somebody, a cast member, a crew member about it. And she said, we will not serve those bottles of wine without the server saying this is how much it is and then the manager comes over and serves the wine and the manager says we just before we open this you know it's three thousand dollars so he was told he was told but wow so and it's a special wine list they have a one there are some wines on there that were eight or nine thousand dollars i mean like yeah that's crazy I, i tell people all the time that every time i'm with a person who's never like lived that life just because we did on that first cruise because when you're with pete sometimes crazy things happen but yeah they're like well, they, especially when he's drinking they pulled out this wooden box and they're like this is all of the uh the special rare stuff and I'm like what in the world is this yeah it was it was wow. nuts there's some crazy yeah i mean you can do real damage you can and, do real damage uh remy is 125 okay. 125 per person okay, okay. So, um the other thing that John wanted me to mention um, was avoid the IGT, OGT, VGT hysteria. Now, what does that mean? Um, once a sailing gets past final payment, which is what, 120 days? No, 90 days. 90 days. <laughs> 90 days before the sailing. Any leftover staterooms Disney will offer in what's called a guarantee status, meaning if you book that, you're not going to be assigned a stateroom. You'll be guaranteed, if you're booking an inside, that you'll get an inside. Or if you're booking an ocean view, you'll get an ocean view or veranda. They will not guarantee what your stateroom number is. And this is at a lower price. Well, a lot of people tend to play roulette with this. And they wait for guaranteed staterooms to become available. And guess what? Sometimes they don't. And then these people lose their minds and they get upset. Um, It is not a good idea unless you are completely comfortable with doing a last minute, basically, you know, within three month uh, booking. And it's okay if you don't get it. I live, you know, an hour from the port. Mm -hmm. I can get away with that. But for most people, they need a little more time. Um, So that apparently has become a thing that people get really hostile when these guaranteed staterooms. So an IGT is an inside guarantee, an OGT is uh, ocean view guarantee, VGT is veranda guarantee. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, how can you ever be happy with Disney? You're not a true Disney fan if you're always happy with Disney. You have to find something to complain about. <laughs> I never <laughs> complain. I'm going to tell you something, you know, look, for as, as, as known as I am for, and I will, you know, I, I think I, my reputation precedes me at this point that I will absolutely say what I think if I don't like something. I will say in the last five Disney cruises, I've been on two this year, one uh, out of San Juan on the Southern Caribbean, the other one out of Vancouver to Alaska, both of them on the Wonder, by the way. I'm going to tell you something. One of the few times that I can honestly say, flawless. Mm. From embarkation to the food in the main dining rooms was unbelievable. Like restaurant quality food we were getting served. To the point where on the, um, the San Juan sailing, I pulled our server off to the side. And I said, I know this is going to sound really obnoxious. Are they cooking these meals specifically? Like, are they cooking these to order for me? Do they, like, know I'm here? And he goes, I swear to God, they're not. And I didn't believe him. So I went out of my way with every person we met to say, so what do you think of the the food? You know, what do you think of the food you're having? We've even, like, made friends with, like, tables around us to a one. 
everybody was saying, I can't get over how good the food is. Yeah. Nice. And let me tell you something. That is a big difference, A, from what it was five, six, ten years ago. Um, it's also a big difference from a lot of other cruise lines. Um, other cruise lines, Royal Caribbean in particular, at one point an executive with Royal admitted to me that they intentionally dumb down the food in the main dining rooms because they want you to book mm-hmm. the specialty oh, dining dear. rooms. Yikes. Oh, um, so when we talk about the price difference between Disney and some of these other lines, a lot more is included with Disney. The level of service, the quality of the product itself, the rooms, the caliber of the staff, the food in the main dining it is just on another level. You're not going to... When you can, when, when people compare Royal Caribbean to Disney Cruise Line, you're not comparing apples to apples. You're just not. You're just not. Disney is a luxury cruise line. It is a luxury cruise line, and it warrants the price they charge. It's like Adventures by Disney. It's the same thing. People are always like, "Oh, it's so expensive." Then they go on one like, "Oh, okay, I get it now." Disney Cruise Line is the same thing. Disney Cruise Line. I realize not everybody can afford it. And so there are other alternatives out there. Royal is a great cruise line. I mean, stay on their newer ships, but... um, I think that we witnessed probably my favorite interaction with a crew member on this last cruise. Probably the best... I think he was the assistant server in uh, one of the dining rooms. Well, they follow you around. We should probably talk about rotational dining, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But in terms of the, the quality of this... Uh, this assistant server, you know, they, they have a little bit more time because they're refilling drinks and taking plates away, stuff like that, nothing hard. So a lot of times they're the ones who are going to to have that extra level of fun with you where the, the main server is, he's trying you to keep, keep that meal paced along. And this assistant server at this other table, just he was great at magic. And like, hmm. not Corey Martin magic. Like, he was good. His sleight of hand was perfect and he had these tables howling Craig the, like panicked because yeah. he was like what is happening behind me because his <laughs> back was like turned to it and the tables behind us were just having the best time Aww. like he was he was doing quarter tricks and so at one point in time he slipped a quarter under one table and he's interacting with this other table and You know, he's messing with the kids and, like, does the behind the ear and, like, well, where'd it go? Where'd it go? And they're all starting to laugh. And he's like, oh, you got to say the magic word. And so every time they say booyah, they all say it. Eventually, it'll pop up. And so they're screaming, booyah, booyah. And he's like, under her plate. And so they're all like, what are you talking about? He's like, under her plate. And this lady lifts up the plate in the corner. Is there and, and everyone's yeah screamed. the entire restaurant yeah. stopped and like wow. this he was it was like one of those ones where like I love the people who are taking care of me mm. but that is like I've never seen server that envy. level yeah oh Aww. major <laughs> server envy major Aww. it was incredible but that's the relationship you build with your your servers now especially here's because of that here's one of the things I want to point out though um, toward the end of the cruise. They're going to tell you about the survey that you're going to get. Um, and this is something that really bothers me that Disney Cruise Line does. Um, if you have wonderful servers, but your food wasn't up to standard, so you give your servers in the survey a high mark, but you give your um, food a low mark, your servers get blamed for that. What? There were flex on your servers because their attitude is... That the server should have fixed it. Now, but not- I'm going to tell you, a lot of people don't say anything. Yeah. Um, so they will tell you, they will tell you that, you know, because they're, oh. they, they will tell you toward the end of the cruise that they are going to be judged on everything, that the servers are judged <coughs> with everything in the dining room. Um, wow. So now whether or not that's just a ploy for them to get five, you know, five out of five or, but this is what I have been told is that they are held accountable. The servers are held accountable for the entire grade of dining, um, which is kind of messed up. 
That doesn't is, seem fair because then people aren't going to be grading the food fairly, and then the food might not improve. Mm-hmm. Like if the food starts, I know you're saying. The well, food fortunately, is not like I said, yeah. the food was quite good. Yeah. But I think it started. Um, I think that policy would. You know, my guess is that it started in the dark, the dark ages when the food. You know, I can remember being on the magic with my dad. God rest his soul. It's the last cruise he did before he passed. Um, and my father, you know, you could have put Alpo in front of my father and he would have eaten it. Um, and we were an animator's palate. We were an animator's palate. And it had taken forever for our food to get out. We were like the le- one of the last tables in the restaurant when our, our main course came out. And they served him a steak. And my father took a couple of bites of it, pushed it away and said, that's not edible. That's how bad the food was in these ships at one point. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like, a, like because of that, in order to be able to say they were getting these great reviews, they would do something like that. So that, you know, I guess Burbank wasn't breathing down their neck or somebody wasn't breathing down their neck. They just saw that the reviews, you know, the, the feedback was all positive from the, from the guests. I don't know. But so what else? What have we missed? Well, should we talk about rotational? Go ahead dining? and talk about rotational dining. So Disney Cruise Line works on a rotational dining basis, and that is that there are three main restaurants on the ships, and basically each night you are at a different restaurant. And you have one of two time slots that you're going to be in. You're either going to be in the, the 530, yeah, the early I think, yeah. 515, mm-hmm. 530 for the early seating. Then the late seating is 8.15. So a lot of times you'll have more kids at the earlier seating and then more adults in the later one. But you never know. It's it, I've seen it kind of vary both ways. But uh, so, like I said, you have three different restaurants. And when you get your key to the world card or what's you what? Want it? Sorry. Yeah, Denny, Denny <laughs> yeah. can show it. We so. have show and tell here. Here we go. So it's written, it's indicated right on the bottom in the with its initials so that you'll know what your dining rotation is. So as soon as you're given this, when you get uh, checked in at Port Canaveral, you can kind of start to look at it. So A would be for Animator's Palette, the E would be Enchanted Garden, and our um, Royal and Palace. Our off the Royal Palace, and on and on. Of course, those change for the different ships because they're called different things. But for the most part, you'll be able to look at yep. that and then know what your rotation is. And then is. also there is going to be your table number. Yep. You are assigned a table number. And it's very important that um, if you're like me and I don't like new people, so if it's like two of us traveling, um, I don't want to be seated at a table with people I don't know. Um, it's just uncomfortable. We, it's, there have been times it's happened and it's been great, but I've had three occasions where it was an absolute nightmare. Oh. It was an absolute nightmare. Um, so where, you know, the, the people were just rude. I mean, did oh. nothing, said nothing to them. I mean, we tried to be polite and mm-hmm. they just didn't want anybody else at their table. I'm like, okay. Um, so I just don't do it anymore. Um, so if that happens, if you end up being seated at a table, um, you're going to have to sit through it that first night, but then talk to the maitre d' and say them, tell them, move me. <laughs> well, and, and Brian and I, the, the uh, cruise we went on in May, that was our first one without the kids and without grandma and grandpa. And so we were kind of the same way, like, oh, we could make friends, but wouldn't it be great if we were just at a table for two? So we kind of put, you can you can indicate, you can try if to If you get, want a small or a large table yeah. in, when you do your online check-in. Right, but as soon as you get on the ship, go find out, like, if you're not going to Apollo or Remy, then you go to the um, the station where they have dining changes. They'll have a, a mater d', one of the head servers will be there, and you can go up and you can say, is it possible for us to be seated at a table for two? And and it worked for us in May. We had a table for two, which was fantastic. Now, it would have been great if we, there's, that's not going to be guaranteed. So you might have to make friends. Um, no. But they want to make you happy. Um, they want you to be a happy sailor. And so. I think it's, uh, if you also have a food allergy, it's important to definitely uh, yes. convey that with them too, if, especially when it comes to wanting a table, maybe just for okay. your immediate family, because uh, like, Kylie obviously has a severe shellfish and 
allergy to all nuts, and so she's allergic to everything. Every Basically. girl is broken. Yeah. And so you couldn't be seated with a ten-year-old eating peel and eat shrimp at the exactly. same table. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's something that if you know if we're ever in a situation where we're put with other people, I would have to feel uncomfortable telling them oh, like, absolutely. no, if there's seafood. A shellfish on the menu it's we can't sit by them because she's also allergic if it's just comes in contact yeah so if someone does squirt that shrimp out and even a little bit touches her she's breaking out now now kylie yes. uh, you joined us on a viking cruise last year down the italian coast I... and we had some real challenges yes. uh, with the dining room in terms of your your allergies how is it for you on disney cruise line it's night and day different that was something else on that cruise it was just i kept having to argue with like oh. i really am it, allergic to it this. wasn't until i told them you're not going to be happy until she sues you into next week that's when you're going to fix because it didn't matter who she told and how many times they oh. kept putting stuff in her food that she couldn't eat oh my that yeah. we had literally sent her like hell hell like medevaced off the ship mm you know kind of allergy what a yeah. shame and it wasn't until I, I said that I noticed that it was as soon as I said you're not going to be happy until you get sued into next week that all of a sudden now it then was magic they were that was like the magic the magic word Sue. <laughs> Sue. <laughs> who but, knew so but Disney was different Disney was different um, they even have allergy friendly menus now it at least started. they did on the yeah. dream and it was amazing because it's still nerve wracking anytime you go out to eat with an allergy. So like just having the menu and it had everything listed and I think it had the eight most common allergies that it avoided. So it would have everything on the main menu. It was like 75% of it was on there, but it would change things if it was like an allergy. Yeah, It's actually very cool. So, and I mean, it does kind of take it away a little bit. They can be flexible. Like for Kylie, when we went to Royal Palace, she really wanted the French onion soup. But because that's made with, obviously, bread, it starts getting into the gluten allergy. So it's not on her menu for that because they try to keep these new allergy menus they're rolling out. They try to make these dishes where it's it doesn't matter if you're only allergic to one thing. It will try to cover if you're allergic to all those eight things. So just on the off chance that you're allergic to shellfish, nuts, gluten, mm -hmm. dairy, everything, they'll try to make these items where it doesn't contain any of that. And, wow. and they were mentioning that it helps the kitchen too. Yeah. So it's like more safe for the guest, but it also helps the staff. Yeah, and they can great. and they can still uh, try to make changes to the menu items if it's something you really, really want, but they recommend using these new allergy menus. And... Honestly, even though we did not pay to go on that last cruise, Disney invited us as part of it. I just have to say there was multiple times where the items that she got off the allergy menu were, were better. better than what I chose wow. off of wow. the regular. Well, we're seeing that, we're, but we're seeing, you know, just with the plant-based options mm -hmm. that Disney World is doing right now, we're seeing that too, mm -hmm. where that... You know, they're coming up with these... Next level. It's totally next it's level. So good. But it's something Disney takes very seriously. So it's good to hear <laughs> yes. that that was a, a better experience. Because after the Viking cruise, I was nervous sure. about going on another one just because... It was, it's, it's scary. You're in the middle of the mm. sea. You can't. Well, we were in Italy. I was yeah. pretty sure the mafia was trying to kill her. Yeah. <laughs> oh okay. They were coming out. Like it was a mafia hit. It was a hit. It was a hit. <laughs> and they were just going to do it with like almonds. Yeah. They weren't very, <laughs> oh, gosh. Almonds and, and shrimp. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pistachios, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pistachios. Yeah. So, but what else? Um, I I, I think we got to get close to wrapping up here. I know Kevin just, I'll just quickly mention this. Kevin wanted us to mention to plan your day. If you're a first time traveler, plan for time to relax. Because mm -hmm. if you've been on Disney parks vacations, you're used to go, go, go. Let's get this right. Let's get this fast pass. Let's get this reservation. Uh, but that's not really what Disney cruises are about. It, it really, any cruises are about. You got to have time to just sit by the pool or go to the spa or just plan for time to just hang out and do nothing because that's yeah. kind of the beauty of going on a Disney cruise. So I just wanted to quickly mention that because I know he wanted us to say that. I, I think another thing, too, is take advantage of the characters in the shows. Uh, it's, you know, after you do a cruise, a Disney cruise, like eight times, the shows 
do start getting very repetitive. Uh, but that first cruise, when you get to get on there and some of the shows, especially now that they've revamped some, it's you have nearly Broadway level. Nearly. Okay, no. No, stop. What, what stop. they do? No, did no. Did you see? Um, no, no. The Frozen one. The Frozen one, I will say, That's, was yeah. fantastic. It was Fro- fantastic. Okay. It was very good. But for those of us who have like done a lot of Broadway shows, don't throw that word around. I can't stand, oh, our Broadway, our Broadway level shows. No, they're not. I, I, I went and watched a, a couple of, because well, Sean was like, you really need to check them out. And we went in. I forgot what the one was. It was one of the regular ones. And I'm like, oh, this is just beyond bad. It's beyond bad. Yeah. I, if, that, if that had opened on Broadway, it would have been closed the next night. Then I saw the Frozen one, and I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, now this is better. Then the next night, there was another one, there was another one of the regular ones. I'm like, okay, no, I'm not yeah. doing this again. The, the ships, the four ships have each have a marquee show. On The Wonder, it's Frozen. On The Fantasy, it's Aladdin. On The Dream, it's Beauty and the Beast, done towards the live action remake. And then on The Magic, it is Tangled. And those are the ones that they are trying to replicate that level. The bad part is then when you watch the other shows, there is a complete distinct difference <laughs> in mm-hmm. And I want to be clear. I want to be clear. It's not the actors. It's not the performers that are the problem. They're fantastic. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are just bad shows. Yeah. You could put Adina Menzel and, you know, Kristen Chenoweth in put, these uh, in these shows, Jennifer and they would, Hudson. and Jennifer, <laughs> and they'd still suck, okay? But because I, I gotta say, the talent, the talent of the performers was really impressive. It was just the shows were bad, and why? And look, the Golden Mickey's. Oh my goodness! The whole time you were talking about that was, was cringeworthy. Bad. Yeah, that wasn't a good. It was one. That so was, that was bad. a marquee show ten years ago. That, that was, was twenty years ago. Years ago. That was yeah. a, that, yeah, that was longer than that. That needs a refresh. And when I tell you, when I tell you, I sat there, I looked at Sean because that was the first one we saw. And I looked at Sean and I said, I'm never going to forgive you for making me come and do this. <laughs> that this is two hours or an hour and a half of my life I'm never getting back. I could reflect. be in a spa. Right. I could be, you know what? I could be down in the engine room and have be more entertained than I'm being watching this awfulness on this yeah. on this cruise. If, if it's your first cruise, I think you definitely need to give them a shot. Absolutely. After that do do your best choices You'll on decide, there but yeah. the characters i it has now become one of my favorite things to do on disney cruises i i'll meet characters in the parks but i'm not wild about it most of the time it's solely for work on dcl i like i have to meet them i'm that kylie witnessed me on castaway key I was making her basically sprint back and forth from the we post office. To, oh, it was very yeah. important. And, you know, because they're in yes. special costumes, you can special only get Super on cute. DCL, whether it's on the ship wearing their, their sailing vest or if it's on Castaway Key wearing their beach stuff. It's, it's, it's part of that cost that you're paying for is these opportunities to meet the characters in a way that you can't in the parks. That's important. They're so cute. All right. Well, we could probably go on and on, uh, but uh, we will be doing more shows. Like I said, this is uh, the first one. Um, we'll be doing this, releasing these regularly starting uh, starting in January. But that will do it for this episode of our Disney Cruise Line show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back with you again soon. Thanks for being with us, folks. <laughs>